Now I don't post these. Well, and we'll take a look at this. Okay, number one. Okay, and the study of rates of reaction, of course, is kinetics. And it's more than just kinetics that we want you to learn about. It's the study of reactions. And while we talk about the kinetics first, it fits the logical sequence of how to study chemical reactions. Uh, reactants going to products are first e examined in terms of kinetic rates. And the issue here in products and reactants, concentration, and over time, the issue here is that in, up until a certain point in this graph, we're talking about kinetics. That is, the slope at any point is constantly changing. So if I drew a line, high, go with my art, artistic ability, there's a point in here where the slope becomes zero, and that is the point that divides the kinetic region or kinetic studies from the equilibrium studies. Here, in every point, there is a changing slope. So we refer to this as the kinetic region. So principles that associate with ch chemical kinetics are applied in this first region. Beyond that, we enter the equilibrium region. And principles associated with the law of mass action governs all of equilibrium, but we'll get to that in proper time, uh, are studied in that section. And out of this, we find the study of kinetics, which is the rates of reaction, and the chemical equilibrium, which is extent of reaction. Now, these can be related very efficiently, especially in equilibrium, to the concept of the third, that's involved in the third area of studying reaction, thermodynamics, which is the energy change associated with reactions. But it also allows us to predict the feasibility of chemical reactions. So please jot down thermodynamics. This is the purpose more than the definition. Uh, defines feasibility. Thermodynamics is a very sophisticated uh, but very young science in that uh, you can get, you can use as much and more, as difficult math applications as you can. In this course, it will find very straightforward concepts uh, that will help us predict whether a reaction will or will not go. I'm not going any further into that right now because that in the proper place needs to be in the proper place. Of course, that is a choice in our collection of answers. Any questions on definitions and kind of the overview of study of reactions? Okay. Which of the following affect rate of reaction? Well, it's obvious that all of them affect rates of reaction. And we call these rate factors. And I gave you an acronym. What was that acronym? Can't see. Can't see. It helps you try to remember what they are. Students <coughs> learn this early uh, in the study of uh, kinetics. Anything, anytime you change one of these factors, you certainly change the rate of reaction. So first one is concentration. I'll go ahead. I figure you've learned them by now. Surface area. Nature. Temperature, actually energy factors. And chemical catalyst.
Concentration refers to changes in the amount of reactant. If you look at a what we call a reference reaction, we have a speed. Reactants go to product rate equals whatever. That's called the reference reaction. Then we double the concentration of one of the reactant components and see what happens. If the reaction doesn't change at all, we call it a zero order reaction as far as the rate. If we double the concentration and we see a double of rate, it's a first order reaction. If we double the concentration and the rate goes up four times, we call it a second order reaction. And you can empirically design or find out how third, fourth, fifth order reactions behave exponentially. You can see this from concentration change. And the reason I'm going extra over this is because we spend more time on concentration effects than anything else, okay? Uh, so we have a rate versus concentration. If it is a zero order, you'll see this right here. If it is a first order, you will see an asymptotic graph like that. Uh, if it's second order, it would be somewhat wide, but parabolic like that. And anything faster will be parabolic, but you'll find that it will be a much tighter curve, <coughs> say a third order and fourth order and fifth order and sixth and so forth. So those are the graphic trends that you should expect when you start working with concentration effects and chemical reactions. So area is, I'm just going to make simple uh, reference, increase the surface area, you increase the rate of reaction. One of the least recognized uh, increased surface area is when you run a chemical reaction in a homogeneous environment like a solution, you provide the maximum surface area you can for the reactants. And so homogeneity is the maximum surface area possibility for a chemical uh, reaction and solution. Nature deals with primarily the structural changes in uh, chemical reactions. We will work one in the Savalis's reaction in which you have a compound called T-butyl chloride and T-butyl bromide. These are T-butyl groups right there. And we'll put these into water and a hydrolysis, solvolysis means reacting with the solvent, okay? So volatiles means reacting with the solvent. But actually it's an hydrolysis reaction because it reacts with water. And we get an HX, whether the X is a halide, chloride, or bromide. And we will monitor this by the growth of the concentration in uh, HX using uh, pH meter. And as we see that growth take place, pH drops as you'll see it and you can use that raw data and to develop the rate law. But the issue is you're comparing rate constants because of nature of natural changes. Temperature and energy factors deal with the thing and we'll hopefully we'll get there today, uh, what we call transition state curves. When a reaction goes from reactants to products like this, it, the reactants have a certain energy level inherent in them, I call it the intrinsic energy, okay? And in order to get A and B to react together, you have to push them up into a higher energy level. And as a result, you reach a point in the transition at which it goes through what we call a, an activation energy state. meaning that the weird complex, it may violate severely the laws of chemical bonding, but for an instant, a millions, uh, millionth of a second, it exists, and then falls forward into the product side of this reaction. Well, the energy and temperature factors are, how close are we to that point where we can push them over the edge? 
if it's a small hill, the reaction goes relatively fast. If it's a very tall hill like that, this would be a slow reaction. And this would be a rather, a faster <coughs> reaction like that. So it's these kind of things you need to keep in the back of your mind as you go approach uh, exam day. Of course, I'll be asking questions on things of this, this nature. Uh, catalysts do function to change this activation hill. Delta EA represents what we call activation energy. And so if you have a hill, a small hill, and you want the reaction to go slower, what you do is put in a chemical and make a big hill out of it. Or if you want, if you have a big hill and you want it to go faster, you add a chemical, make a lower hill out of the issue. And that's what the catalysts do. Okay, so in this, all of the uh, considerations are certainly valid in considering the uh, factors affecting reactions. Okay. Any questions? Okay. And number three, consider the hypothetical reaction going from A to products. If at the start of the reaction, uh, the concentration of A is 1.5 molar, so we're going from reactants to products, and we start out with 1.5 five molar and this goes to 1.0 molar at t equals zero and this one's at t equal 30 seconds. Uh, what's the rate average? Well, you recall when we talk about chemical rates, we talk about them in terms of concentration changes over time. So rate of reaction is change in concentration over change in time. So that's the speedometer, if you will, of the chemical uh, rate. And so we change in concentration. So we go to uh, 1.0, we start at 1.5. Uh, it's uh, 1.0 molar minus 1.5 molar divided by, and it's straight out zero to 30 seconds. So we'll just go 30 seconds into that and so that comes out 0 0.017 molar per second. Now be sure you reference your units and how you as you study. Units in kinetics are represented in uh, various ways, okay? In terms of <coughs> concentration over time is the uh, appropriate representation, but in chemistry typically you'll find molarity over seconds. Well molarity over seconds may turn out to be moles over liters per second. And if you invert the denominator and multiply as the math people tell us to do, we wind up with moles over liters dot times seconds. So look at how different the reference is and you'll see them and many times reference like that in problems and both and all of those are used. So please check mark that in your study effort uh, that you are conscious of the units and how those units attach to the problem of the reaction or, and we'll, we'll emphasize this more and sometimes you'll see it listed mole liters minus one seconds minus one as the ec negative exponent indicates a reciprocal anyways you will know. So uh, a choice if you're keeping score. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Very straightforward type problem. If I'm going too fast, I'll leave it up. I think I got enough room to do number four here. Okay. Consider the reaction. Let me jot down the reaction real quick. Four and H three and all of this is gas phase plus 5O2 goes to 4NO gas plus 6H2O and they gave a measured rate determined measured however 0 
See how that one's moles over liters seconds for the ammonia. Now, this uses coefficient concepts to establish a, I don't know, a binary uh, algebraic equation and solve for the other, if you will, uh, or the question type component of the reaction. And in this particular case, is asking for NO. Now, there's two things in here. You gotta work it out to show it's the same ray. Or notice real quickly, and I do this so that you'll notice, because in the lectures I'm always working with it, coefficients that are not equal. So if it gives an equal uh, coefficients, if the coefficients are equal, in other words, then the rates are equal. One's disappearing at 0.5 because it's a four, and the other one's appearing at 0.5 because it's a four. See the point? So if they're different, however, they will have different rates. Now here's a, here's a little rule of thumb. If the number is larger than the reference number, here's the reference number, it's gonna have a larger rate. If the reference number, if the target number is smaller, say this was a three or something, I don't know, three or something over there, then the outcome is gonna be smaller. So just kinda, as you work out your problems, you wanna be sure the little logic things work in, in, in considering the problems, okay? So, but in this one, and working with problems like this, we're asked to set up a problem between nitrous oxide and nitrogen monoxide however, and ammonia. So we're really working with the change in ammonia over change in time is equal to something change in NO over change in time. Well, the rule I gave you was what? Swap coefficients. Remember me telling you whatever the coefficient is on the target you put in front of the uh, uh, known and whatever the coefficient on the known is, you put it in front of the unknown. So this would be a four and a four. Well, since they're the same, if you have 0 0.50 mole per liter second here, then it's gonna be 0 0.50 mole per liter second here, and that these will certainly divide out without any trouble. Let's do one real quickly that's does not have equal um, coefficients. Uh, if ammonia is disappearing at 0.5, what's the uh, appearance of water? <coughs> Just as, uh, so we set up change in ammonia against change in time to equal change in the concentration of H2O over the change in time. Now since the six is associated with the H2O, we bring the six over here. And since the four is associated with ammonia, we bring it over to the water side. Then we substitute the appropriate given into the equation. And solve, of course, for the unknown. And so this would, of course, divide both sides by four. And so you would have six divided by four times 0 0.50 mole per liter second. So that's three halves. Oh, I gave my calculator away. Somebody give me a number. Oh, I had an extra calculator. I do have an extra calculator. Typically, I'm very negligent for getting my calculator. Ta-da. And it works, too. Okay, 0.5 times six equals, divided by four equals 0 0.75 mole per liter second. So there is one in which we have different coefficients. The problems on the exam will be just the same. They're just different equations and numbers, okay? The mechanism of solving them are the same. Uh, I would encourage you to try the, say, the oxygen combination just to reinforce your, your knowledge. Point 0.5, well, obviously point 0.5 mole per liter per second is C choice in there. Any questions about the equation coefficient? Okay. 
Okay. Finally, in our adventure through this. Okay. Uh, what's the empirical rate law of the given reaction? Let me jot down the reaction real quick for you. So we have 2NO2, all of its gas phase, plus 7H2 goes to 2NH3 plus 4 H2O. The empirical is one that contains variables. It is not a numerical rate law, different. Okay? So we always write the empirical uh, rate law in terms of the reactants. Just to make a note. Okay, so we won't start writing. Now, this doesn't mean that experimental work is only in terms of reactants. The rate, empirical rate law and the numerical rate law are in terms of the reactants. However, you might monitor a product and translate whatever you see in the product concentration changes into some change for the uh, reactant side. This we will do when we work with the uh, T-butyl halide. Remember, it generates an acid. We use the uh, pH meter, and we'll translate pH into concentration changes that are associated with the consumption or subolysis or hydrolysis of the T-butyl halides. Okay, and then write our rate law and so forth from that. The empirical is rate is always just simply the word rate equals rate constant times the product of the concentration of the reactants raised to empirical values, that is variable values, X, Y, A, B, whatever you want to put up there, like that. The reactants are NO2 gas and H2 gas, and we'll just use X and Y's as that. Your job in working problems and so forth is to find out what X and Y and rate are, okay? Now please check mark this in your notes. The only way to come up with X and Y is by experimental methods. There is no pre-calculation based upon the equation or, or stoichiometry or anything of that nature that will allow you to predict what X and Y are short of actually measuring concentration changes and the rates associated with those concentration changes. So it's an experimental process. Now the rate constant is a calculation on the tail end of this. And you may have several experiments. That constant should match all the way down for every concentration combination that you use. So try to keep those little footnotes in, in mind because they will show up on uh, test day. Uh, looks like B choice is your appropriate answer for that one. Any questions on this?